All right, welcome back. So uh, here's another video. Uh, it's fairly technical in nature. Um, I've again taken some um, inserts from manuals that I have uh, and modified them with PowerPoint to help facilitate you know, some of this technical discussion. Uh, so a couple things I want to go over. Uh, I want to um, revisit the, the cam disk uh, speed. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the operating principles uh, of these radial engines and um, I want to you know talk about the entire drivetrain for all of the accessories located at the back of the engine um, and I've color-coded uh, you know a couple of charts that hopefully help us uh, through this so to start with uh, the the video that I made about the nose case timing system and the drivetrain for the valves uh, regarding that video, I had a comment from uh, a viewer that was asking about the accuracy of the speed of the crankshaft. So the question basically was, how is it that the cam on a four-stroke engine moves at one-sixth speed in relation to the crank? And if I meant one-quarter speed. So super great question. Um, and as I stated in that video, I knew that the cam disc rotates at one-sixth crankshaft speed, but I wasn't exactly certain why it did that. So I did some more digging and I, and I found the answer to why that is. Uh, first, you know, we need to make a couple of statements of fact. So we know we're talking about a four stroke engine, which includes, um, you know, the intake compression power and exhaust stroke between the, your compression stroke and your power stroke, you have the ignition event. Now it's really important to understand that there's actually two full rotations of the crankshaft uh, during this this sequence of intake compression power and exhaust uh, which is 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation it's also important to understand that during this full sequence our intake and exhaust valves have opened and closed one time so um, if we apply just a, a little bit of simple math uh, we know that if the crankshaft or rather the cam disc rotates at one sixth crankshaft speed then after full rotation of the crankshaft the disc should have moved one-third of its entire revolution and that's key so if you look at this picture um, we're looking at the cam disc right now um, you see on the forward track there's the intake lobes there are three of them and on the aft track there's three exhaust lobes so being that the the cam disc rotates at one-third every two uh, crankshaft rotations the cam disc will have moved one-third essentially it's going to be in the exact same location relative to to the other lobes as it was when it started and that's exactly why it moves at one-sixth crankshaft speed so um, you know in, in in the interest of being thorough I looked at a couple of other seven cylinder engines I looked at the Lycoming R680 and the Wright R760 now these are both seven cylinder engines um, but the difference with those two engines uh, vice the Jacobs R755 is that their cam discs have eight lobes four intake lobes four exhaust lobes and they both rotate at one eighth crankshaft speed so you know using that information we can deduce that the speed of the cam disc is not a factor or it's not related to the, the operating cycle of the engine, it's related to how the cam disc is actually manufactured. How many lobes does it have? Uh, and, uh, you know, just to go a little bit further, I went ahead and looked at the right 975. Now, this is a nine cylinder engine, and its cam disc has 10 lobes five on the intake track, five on the exhaust track, and it rotates at one tenth crankshaft speed. So it, it seems clear to me that the speed of a cam disc is, you know, is. A function of how many lobes uh, are there for each of the valves uh, to be used. Now, if you look in this photo that I've got here, uh, this is the drivetrain, and what's in orange is actually the cam disc, and it it says that it's one six crankshaft speed. Um, and so, obviously, we talked about the drivetrain for this. It all starts with that blue air, which is actually the timing gear on the crankshaft that turns the um, oh, I forget the name of the part, but the um, the main 
gear pinion main i forget what it's called but it's in brown and then our um cam pinion is in red that's blind into the brown and that's actually what turns the the orange portion which is the the cam disc all right so moving along uh, let's take a look at our accessory drivetrain but to start um, let's let's look at this illustration i've got here so uh, this is uh, an illustration of the entire drivetrain um, in the upper left hand corner is the propeller end of the crankshaft and the red line is the center line of the crankshaft the forward and aft portions uh, the green line is the center line of the crank pin where the master rod connects and at the rear of that is where um, the rear crankshaft attaches via that clamp bolt that we removed a couple weeks ago. Now, the extreme, extreme end of the rear crankshaft, there's a square drive there, and that's actually for the fuel pump, which, being directly, you know, mechanically linked to the crankshaft, rotates at crankshaft speed. So, for this next illustration, I've tried to color coordinate uh, all of the gears. So, really the most important ones or th the main drives are the orange gear uh, which is the magneto drive gears uh, and the purple and green are actually the same gear it's the crankshaft cluster gear um, it's just it's got two sides to it and it looks like this um, you know there's the large side and there's the smaller side the large side is going to drive a couple different accessories, and then the smaller side is actually our oil pump uh, drive gear. gear. So going back to it, um, the orange, uh, the dark orange, is a magneto drive. It drives both our magneto gears, which are in the lighter orange. Uh, the green portion, which is the back side of the crankshaft cluster gear, is our oil pump drive. And then the purple section, the larger gear, drives our starter drive which is at the top in blue and then the dark red at the bottom is our generator drive so looking at the magneto drives you see there's two of them they're identical and the reason for that is in order to um, make the different variants of the R755 those two drives are there some of these R755s have two magnetos as the ignition system. Uh, the one that we have has one magneto, which is uses the drive on the left, and the drive on the right uh, is actually an accessory drive, um, which or, or is an accessory drive shaft that has three other accessories on it. One of those accessories being the distributor, which is the other half of the ignition system. And this distributor is actually powered by the aircraft battery system, not, you know, an independent system like the Magneto. So in any case, we've got the, the starter drive in blue is actually geared to one and a half times crankshaft speed. And it actually turns faster in the crankshaft because it is the starter. You know, you want the, the that, that shaft to turn faster. The dark red is, you know, the generator drive that's at 1.421. Uh, so again, that's faster than the, the crankshaft, but this turns faster to generate an electrical output. Now, on the accessory drive shaft, uh, there's a case that fits back there, and it fits, as I mentioned earlier, our distributor. And it also fits our prop governor. Um, if the engine is on an aircraft that has one or utilizes one, um, or a, a constant speed propeller, I should say. So uh, for the Cessna C-78 that this engine goes on, there were several different options for the propeller. There was a fixed pitch wooden propeller, um, which obviously didn't need a propeller governor. And then you had a, um, a constant speed metal propeller um, that used a propeller governor to you know, vary the pitch of the propeller. And then at the far end is the vacuum pump, and there's a little slot drive for that. It just drives the uh, the vacuum pump at the same speed as that particular magneto drive, which is 7 eighths crankshaft speed. Now, the propeller governor, it is geared to, it steps up the speed from 7 eighths crankshaft speed back up to 
um, crankshaft speed uh, for the output of the prop governor. And the distributor is stepped down from 7 eighths crankshaft speed to half crankshaft speed. So that pretty much sums up all of the accessories, explains the drivetrain. Um, you know, I hope, hope somebody likes this video. Um, I certainly had a lot of fun making it. Uh, if you have any questions or you want some other things about different engines, uh, more than happy to look into it and, and talk about it for a while.